will uh, participants who join just start i request all of the participants to mute and mute their audio as well as video ellarigu namaskara now ivattu sabhe serido serirodu ondu mukhyavagi ivattina topic bandu jati ಜಾತಿ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯಗಳು ಒಂದು ವಿಮರ್ಶನೆ ಲಾಕ್ಡೌನ್ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ಜಾತಿ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯಗಳಾಗಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನು ವಿಮರ್ಶನೆ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಸೇರಿದೀವಿ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ದು ಸಭೆ ಬಂದಿ ಆಲ್ಟರ್ನೇಟಿವ್ ಲಾ ಫೋರಂ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಪರ್ಯಾಯ ಕಾನೂನು ವೇದಿಕೆ ಏನೋ ಒಂದು ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ನಾವು ಸೇರಿದೀವಿ ನಮ್ದು ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಲೀಗಲ್ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುತ್ತೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ ಜೊತೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತಾ ರಾವ್ ಇದಾರೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಅವ್ರ ಇದಾರೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತಾ ರಾವ್ ದಲಿತ್ ಫೆಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅವರು ಅವರು ಡಬ್ಲ್ಯೂ ಎಸ್ 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 ಡಬ್ಲ್ಯೂ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಕನ್ವೀನರ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇದನ್ನ ಮೇನ್ ಅಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರ ಮೇಲೆ ಆಗಿರುವ ಯಾವುದೇ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯ ವಿರುದ್ಧ ಹೋರಾಟ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದ್ರ ಜೊತೆಗೇನೆ ಅವರು ಪಿ ಯು ಡಿ ಆರ್ ಜೊತೆನು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ರು ನಮ್ ಜೊತೆ ಇರೋದು ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ಸ್ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಅಂತ ಇವರು ದಲಿತ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಸ್ಟ್ ರೀಜನಲ್ ಕೋಆರ್ಡಿನೇ ಕೋಆರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಫಾರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಡಿಫೆಂಡರ್ಸ್ ಅಲರ್ಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇವರು ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟಿವ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಕೆ ಆರ್ಗೆ ಇವರು ಸುಮಾರು ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗು ಮತ್ತೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ರಾ ಅಟ್ರಾಸಿಟಿ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಆಗಿ ವಿಕ್ಟಿಮ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಸಿಗೋ ತರ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದೇ ಜೊತೆ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಇವರು ತುಂಬಾ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆಗು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಈ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏಜೆನ್ಸೀಸ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವ್ ಏನಕ್ಕೆ ಇದು ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಚೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಈ ಕಳೆದ ಮೂರ್ ತಿಂಗಳು ಏನ್ ಲಾಕ್ಡೌನ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸುಮಾರು ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಸಿಟಿ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಏನ್ ಹೊಸದಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾರತ ಸಮಾಜದಲ್ಲಿ ಆದ್ರೆ ಈ ಲಾಕ್ಡೌನ್ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವ್ ಏನ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಸಿಟಿ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಇನ್ನೂ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅದು ಕಾ ಲಾಕ್ಡೌನ್ ಆಗಿ ಕೊರೋನಾ ವೈರಸ್ ಇಂದ ಅದು ಇನ್ನೂ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಸಿಟಿಗೆ ಇನ್ನೂ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಒಂದ್ ಕೇಸ್ ನಾವು ನೋಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿದ್ರೆ ತುಮಕೂರಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಂಪಯ್ಯ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಮರ್ಡರ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಇವರೊಬ್ರು ಗ್ರಾಮ ಸೇವಕರಾಗಿ ಒಂದು ಯಾವುದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗಲ್ ಎನ್ಕ್ರೋಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆದಾಗ ಆ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಮಾಡೋ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಮಾಡೋ ಇವ್ರ ಕೆಲಸ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಇವರು ಒಬ್ರು ಹಿಂದೂ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ಅವರು ಯಾವ್ದೇ ಗೋಮಾಲ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಒಂದು ಯಾವಾಗ ಇವರು ಎನ್ಕ್ರೋಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅವಾಗ ಇವರು ಯಾವಾಗ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಕಂಪ್ಲೇಂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಇವ್ರನ್ನ ಮರ್ಡರ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಇಡೀ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಅವರೇ ಇವ್ರನ್ನ ಎಫ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಮಾಡಲಾರ್ದೆ ಇವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಏನು ಶಿಕ್ಷೆ ಏನು ಅರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಲಾರ್ದೆ ಇವ್ರನ್ನ ಆ ಫ್ರೀ ಆಗಿ ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ನಾವು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ತೆಲಂಗಾಣ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ನೋಡಿದ್ವಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ನೋ ಪದ ಏನು ಈ ಲಾಕ್ಡೌನ್ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂತು ಇದ್ರ ಮೇನ್ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಏನಿತ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಒಬ್ಬ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ಬ ಮನುಷ್ಯಗೆ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಸಂಪರ್ಕ ಇರಬಾರ್ದು ವೈರಸ್ ಬರಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಏನ್ ಉದ್ದೇಶದಿಂದ ಈ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಆದ್ರೆ ಇದೇ ಟರ್ಮ್ ನ ಮಿಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಒಬ್ಬ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಷಿಯನ್ ರಾಮಲಿಂಗೇಶ್ವರ ಅನ್ನೋರು ತೆಲಂಗಾಣಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಕವಿತೆ ಬರೀತಾರೆ ಏನಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಸ್ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಅಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯತೆಯನ್ನ ನಾವು ಯಾವ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಸಮಾಜ ಯಾವ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಫಾಲೋ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅದೇ ನಾವು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಂತ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಕವನ ಬರೀತಾರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಒಂದು ಎಫ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಆಗುತ್
She is also a trained physician and has worked primarily in field of clinical research. Along with us, we have Manohar. He is a Dalit activist, a regional coordinator for South India for Human Rights Defenders Alert India. He is also executive director for CARE. He has been part of several fact-finding teams constituted inquiring into cases of caste atrocities and has actively involved and intervened in assisting the victims to get justice. He has also been invited as resource person to various universities and by government agencies to talk on constitution, human rights, international law and social analysis and other related subjects. So uh, the reason why we have uh, the topic that is for today's webinar is uh, to have a review of the caste atro atrocities that has taken place during the lockdown period. One of the main reason why uh, we chose this topic is because we saw that uh, one there have been several incidents of caste atrocities which has not come under uh, uh, mainstream media. For example, one case that we saw was of Kempaya's murder in Tumkur, where uh, he was appointed as a Gram Sahak in Tasilda's office, and whose main job was to report any kind of uh, uh, illegal encroachment upon Gomala lands or government lands, basically. So when he was only furthering his uh, occupation and profession, uh, he was murdered by caste Hindus uh, when they tried to illegally encroach upon him. And also we see that the state machinery itself failed to uh, file a fire under uh, 302 as well as under Atrocities Act. And the whole family had to all the way come down to Bangalore, uh, post the, uh, you know, the police officials in Tumkur to register a fire. Uh, so we and along with that we also see that uh, in Telangana we had the case where this one musician called Ram Lingeshwara uh, so, uh, uh, make some kind of comparison with social distancing and untouchability and he propagates untouchability saying that that since Vedic times and uh, since the since Vedic times the untouchability practice has been valid and it has to continue and because of which uh, there was an FIR that was in, uh, filed later on. So considering these incidents that has happened uh, within these four months of lockdown, we see that caste atrocities has somehow become more uh, enhanced because of the lockdown, as well as uh, 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 the situation that uh, where the state machinery itself failed to assist the victims. So considering these, we, uh, we thought to have this discussion. So I would now, uh, without any further delay, I would request Dr. Ajita Rao to start this meeting. Please, ma'am. Hi, um, hi, friends. Um, I would first thank the organizers, um, ALF and uh, Shiva particularly, in getting me in touch with ALF to speak on this topic but I would be honest to say that I am sure that there are learned experts from Dalit uh, community and activists who, who have done much more work than me to, to be able to speak on, on this very important topic today. But I'm fortunate to be here and I'll share some of the experiences which I have read so far. And I am sure that this discussion would surely take us to a, a a broader understanding at the end of it. Um, I, it. At the beginning, I would just say that I was reading that this filmmaker, Paranjit, had quoted that COVID-19 would kill humans, but this would not eradicate the deep-rooted deep hatred against Dalits, which is very true. And what is happening in this complete pandemic and the lockdown is, the perpetuation of the caste within the paradigm of the lockdown and the COVID has increased with so much subtleness, with brazenness also, and there is no outspoken uh, cry from any person, like, be it the uh, civil society, be it the uh, people out there, it's not coming out in the media. And the incidents have been happening at a major level, which the media usually is not taking, even otherwise, prior to COVID or uh, prior to this government or, you know. Uh, according to one of the reports by National, Just National Movement for Dalit Justice, NDMJ, NCDHR report, which they've done, in April and May, 
after the lockdown, quoting with the same figures of last year, they have said that there is an increase of 72% atrocities against Dalits, which is a huge number. And that in itself speaks of the volumes of the cases of murders, assault, rapes, every other uh, discrimination that can happen against Dalits. I mean, in these two, three months, which they have done a survey that speaks of the kind of assaults. Uh, this survey also tells us, particularly of the areas in which they have worked in the Northern Belt, like the Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, particularly where they are saying that uh, that the agricultural laborers, especially from the Dalit communities, are not, they are forbidden to harvest the crops because they believe that they are going to spread the coronavirus, and hence they are assaulted and they are denied the right to work, which is so brazen. There, um, the assaults, the discrimination continues. These are all forms of discrimination. Let's start with the social distancing, which WHO has given us in the time of Corona, how to practice safe distancing and personal hygiene. Two things are very important here for, at least as a physician, and as to say that the worldwide people are saying practice social distancing. For us in India, it is always being done against the Dalits. We have been socially ostracized by the upper caste, forward caste people, in the name of caste, the in the name of purity, and and which is being further perpetuated by the COVID-19 and the lockdown. This this has been there for centuries for us people, and and the. And, and they're benefiting from it, the upper caste people, I would say. And second aspect about the personal hygiene, washing hands, it is a gimmick also because where the bare minimum resources available to the common people, especially to the marginalized section of uh, water. water. Hello. Hello. Yeah, sorry of availability of water is so bare minimum that uh, it, it speaks that we, we just cannot, how can a person who does not even have drinking water, safe drinking water, enough drinking water to for the daily resources course that to be done. And he has the luxury to wash his hands every 20 minutes or 20 seconds. This is a hypocrisy that government of India and the world WHO has given that one should do this in order to keep this virus at bay. Um, India cannot, India, Indian population, especially the marginalized, the poor people have no resources and access to it. And coming to, uh, in, in, in saying this social distancing, I have heard other activist people and the people and the activists who are with the Dalit movement and all saying that let's refrain from using social distancing and say physical distancing uh, in order to um, be more more practical way of talking about it. I would now talk about some uh, cases of incidents that have happened here in the Northern Belt, particularly um, one such incident I would say in April in the um, Mansa district of Punjab, Dutyanwali village, where just lockdown was announced and the, in the first week of, second week of April, the young boys and were playing and women were sitting in the in front of the homes, where police came and just barged and said that you're not supposed to sit out and play. This, this is a lockdown period and curfew is imposed. And when when they start and they started abusing because of the tiny spaces they live in, there was a scuffle. This was headed by one ASI Gutech Singh. There was a scuffle between the residents and the police, in which this policeman also was injured and they, they retreated. On the next day, that is on 12th April, 
around 300 policemen in 30 to 35 police vehicles came to this uh, Dalit Basti and brutally assaulted the entire village, young boys, women, men, and took away the took away men, 50 men with them, and en route to the police station where badly thrashed them. And they, they charged 15 of these Dalit men with cases against them. The case, the, the case is ongoing and one of our democratic rights to AFDR is pursuing the case there. In another such case in um, Maharashtra, uh, Prakash Ambedkar's uh, one of the activists, young boy, Arvin Bansod, died under mi mysterious circumstances. Police, police is trying to hush up this case as a case of suicide, whereas Prakash Ambedkar and his activists claim that this activist was murdered by some of the political parties. And because of these uh, 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 police trying to um, you know, protect them, they have registered a case under suicide thing and uh, it's, it's again pushed. So the death of uh, an active Dalit activist here belonging to Prakash Ambedkar's group. One case, cases here in Punjab. Similar cases happen, I mean, two, three incidents where a 14 year old, again a 14 year old young girl from Kerala, who's, belong, who's, who's the daughter of a daily wage worker. She died because of lack of access of a mobile because she could not access her online classes that would be that, that are taking place. Then in another incident in UP, Saharanpur, a young Dalit widow, when she went to ask for her rations to be given by during the lockdown, um, the counselor said, since you did not vote for me and your, husband, your uh, relatives didn't vote for me, you are denied, we will not provide you with ration. And instead, when she protested, she was brutally thrashed by the counselor's husband and brother-in-law by bricks on her head. And uh, um, it, it's, it's just gross violation of, you know, come what you can do. I mean, we, we will do anything and you just face the brunt of the violence. She was first given verbal abuses, all caste slurs. And when she relented, kept on protesting, she was physically assaulted with a brick on her head. Um, similarly, in B district in Maharashtra, where a young sanitation worker, after doing a hard labor's work, when he was having his bread and tea, the forward caste people just came rushing with vengeance as to why you are here, and we would, and they threatened him. They beat him that if he's continues staying in that area, he's polluting the area, and they beat him. And when, when he, he said, okay, enough, I will lodge a protest. He lodged a protest, a complaint in, uh, uh, in, in the police station. Three of them were arrested. And after when they were released on bail, they came back threatening him and his four-year-old sister saying that enough of your complaints against us in the police station. Now we will kill you. So now this boy says, the young sanitation worker, now, even if they kill me, where do I have to go? I mean, this is the place that I born and brought up. Uh, coming back to our people's op um, occupation based where we are, the, be it the rack pickers, be it the sanitation workers, especially the women in the sanitation workers, be it the manual scavengers. These are the worst, we are the worst affected people here and government is not doing anything. In the garb of saying that we are giving 500 rupees per person where Prime Minister Modi ji has said, what help would this 500 rupee provide to that uh, widow Mamta in Saharanpur who was brutally assaulted? Would she go through her monthly expenses wherein she has a one, year, uh, a one physically challenged son and another young boy to take care of her. I mean, and 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 when Prime Minister announces that the sanitation workers would be under the insurance scheme, 
and in itself it's a cry that you're saying that the manual scavenging is in you know it's an it's abolished and you're saying that you're giving uh, you're ready to pay insurance to those workers in what condition are those workers working day and night in the hospitals in the residential colonies in the uh, railways with no equipment at all and these are the people who are first affected with infection presently they are the 60 to 70 percent of the population working there. the point is the cases of atrocities have been rising uh, assaults have been rising women are the worst affected in all of this prior to this now also there's another very uh, uh, i mean uh, going back to the uh, issues that have happened once the migration was happening people were going back from cities to their own small places villages and towns a young woman who was positive or covid positive had to be quarantined and and was admitted in bihar hospital this young lady was assaulted by the uh, health workers there and she was raped such cases have, have been happening, but they, the, the sporadic incidents have been reported back to the media. So there are like, you know, the women are back in, walking back to the villages in, in the hope of meeting rest of the family members, though there is hunger and despair awaiting them. What they are further going into push, being pushed into is, the forms of untouchability, the isolation, um, they're further being pushed into the margins and that isolation and that so-called untouchability reigns is being propagated by the state. So these paradigms of be within the home, be safe, clean your hands, eat good food, nutritious food to enhance your immunity, these are all for the privileged upper caste people and not for the section of the population which is which is the marginalized section. Um, what 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 measures we have to do, how we have to come forward to tackle the situation is I think we need to get in um, more sensitize the civil society around us more more actively. Um, ask the state to help us, maybe perhaps, I'm not optimistic about it, but to implement or disburse the funds from the sub plan, which is for SCST. Um, what level the monitoring committees and all operate at the district and taluka levels, but I'm not too optimistic about it but if we can pursue it to register FIRs to build a network where the, where the community people can go first there and lodge complaints and have a uh, mechanism where, where these are the people whom we can go to and they can take our cases forward to perhaps some system in place should be there otherwise we all know that lodging of FIRs has become a very arduous task prior to COVID and in COVID times it is not so difficult. So uh, maybe with this zero FIR, if people anywhere can file FIRs on behalf of them, I think some steps, major steps need to be taken by us. Onus of responsibility lies on all of us and uh, um, I'm, I'm sure and I would be part of any such initiative which would help um, the marginalized, the Dalits, the tribals, the especially Muslims, the, the hate by Godfrey, which is happening against every one of us. If we can uh, get together in, in these times and fight at a level, maybe perhaps we can um, emerge to have some uh, system in fighting it out and to have some system in getting some resources available to us because that resource availability has become a big problem now the problem is of um, access to water access to food access to basic housing which 
which I am not getting, which which people are not getting. So I think first let's get there, and then the trust, because now the fight is for the bare minimum of resources. So I am sure um, um, uh, if, if, on these lines and terms, if we can uh, have some understanding as to how we can go about um, addressing these basic issues. And of all these, I'm sure with this intersectionality and cross-sectionality of it, the work issue, atrocities, the women face the most burden of it. Amongst the women, the Dalit women take the major chunk of the burden of atrocities. And in the women, in the Dalit women, the sex workers, domestic workers who are there, uh, they take the major chunk of the violence that is there both within the homes and outside the homes. I'm, I just want to end with the saying, I mean, with a quote that came to my mail recently from some um, um, campaign letter which the um, scholars saying that if sex workers in India are um, maybe, you know, um, uh, sex workers in India are maybe unko thoda agar hum nikal dete hai or if they are treated, the COVID cases would decrease drastically in India. So, in what way these scholars in sitting in Harvard or wherever they are, Yale, they have sent out a big letter saying that these sex workers are the major reason for spreading COVID-19 and that if, if they are the ones we take care of, coronavirus would be tackled to a larger level. I mean, such is the, uh, I would say, uh, very... Um, lopsided uh, and view of some scholars sitting, stupid lopsided view of these scholars sitting there. If they want to do a survey, please come to India and do the survey with us. Speak to our sex workers here, sex worker friends, the friends who are working, in what conditions we are there, the transgender people here, the, the marginalized activists, marginalized persons, community people, and then bring out a campaign or letter to say that what, what and where needs to be done. So I denounce such letter and campaign which has come from it. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's all. I, I mean, I can forward that letter also, but I think we have to give a slap to such um, letters which are being circulated. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Manu. Yeah. I can. Uh, I won't want to listen to Manohar Ji, and he can further take on questions. Yes, I'll just translate briefly. Just uh, Ajita Ma'am, or one of the NCDHR report, bage matarta in her drone re. April May alle or report alle, sumaru seventy two percent Dalitra mele actor or attachara jasti agide anta report made dro. Adur jote ke ne oru Punjab Uttar Pradesh alli hege uh, agricultural workers ge or ge kelsa maada the bed anta hai bitti uh, or ge kelsin da tadi or ge yade rite aada aada ya illa yade rite aada wages illa itara tumba problem aagi the anta hai ta idro adur jote ke ne or sumar incidents bage maata idro vandu vandu Dalit basti alli hege vaba uh, uh, orga mane anta orga de bandhu kos kara Ega police idi on the police battalion a bunbati idea urane arrest madi tumajana arrest madi if I lagi itara yariti police re doctene madi daranta other bage heldro other jotegene in on the Maharashtra le in on the incident bage matarta or in Hadrandre Oba Arvind Bonrade Anoru Ambed Auruba Dalit activist Adoru Auruguno Oba sanitation worker Agi du Koskara our new Kelseke Barat Bada, Uruk Barbada, Ninindane Covid Barta Denta, Ur Melo Dorjana Madiduke, Madidru, Adamele, Fire Hakak Tri Madre, File Madak Tri Madre, Tumba Kastagi, Fire File Madru, Amele, Fire File Madiduke, Idi or Family Nane, uh, 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 death threats Kotadru, Itaran, you Fire Hake File Madrianta, Idi Ure Bande or Death Threats Kotranta Hedro. Iderita or in Hedrande, now in Itara. Uh, no, uh, guidelines for the government in the Kaitor Kola Dirli, clean Agira Dirli, 
ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಬರೀ ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅಪ್ಪರ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಯೂಸ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಮಾರ್ಜಿನಲೈಸ್ಡ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಅಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಶೋಷಿತ ಸಮಾಜದವ್ರಿಗೆ ಈ ತರ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಈ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾಗಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇದು ಒಂದು ಸರ್ವೆ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಫಾರಿನ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಇಂದ ಅವ್ರ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಸೆಕ್ಸ್ ವರ್ಕರ್ಸ್ ನ ನಾವು ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕೊಟ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಕಮ್ಮಿ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ಕಮ್ಮಿ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಇದನ್ನ ಅವರು ವಿರೋಧಿಸ ವಿರೋಧಿಸ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತ್ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ತರ ಅವರು ಯಾವ್ದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದು ಸರ್ವೆ ಮಾಡಲಾರ್ದೆ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಫಾರಿನ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಈ ತರ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕೊಡೋದು ತುಂಬಾ ತಪ್ಪು ನಾವು ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಅವರು ಅವ್ರ ಮಾತನ್ನ ಮುಗಿಸ್ರು ಇವಾಗ ನಾನು ಮನೋಹರ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಸರ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಸರ್ ಅನ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಹಲೋ ಓಕೆ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಟು ಎಲ್ ಎಫ್ ಅಡ್ವೊಕೇಟ್ ಬಸವ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಅಡ್ವೊಕೇಟ್ ಶಿವಮಣಿಧನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಅದರ್ ಲಿಸನರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತ ಫಾರ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಸೆಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟೋನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಪಿಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಇವನ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲರ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ವಾಷಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ for large section when i raised the same issue here people say is washing bad i said washing is good people always wash hands but, but then why are we forcing it on a certain section and then where there is no water i live in a, one of the biggest slums and i i just now from my home office which is a very small place i have to close all my doors and then tell people not to talk this in itself is a such a pathetic situation for me and the community which i live in because all of them are shut at home and uh, they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow because they say tomorrow the whole day is over and uh, this in terms of a larger livelihood i want to connect and uh, that is the reason uh, i have now closed both of my doors my windows and i i had to find some place to sit silently and then talk but i could not do that one i want to actually set a little bit of background in terms of looking at uh, when this law started and then uh, what happened to this whole question of protection of uh, the shell caste and shell tribes that we are talking about today the dalits and uh, i think this, uh, many of our listeners would know this one and i want to set it because today 2020 we are talking about covid and then it's aftermath and then violence on dalits and i i feel very sad one because of dalit and second because dalits are also human beings and dalit rights are human rights and i think uh, why very specifically atrocities on these sections of population from time immemorial and we don't know how long it will continue and i think uh, therefore i think we need to actually look at uh, whether the system is working and then if it's working for who is it working and uh, we have let the system perpetuate perpetuate this violence on a certain section of the population by the non sort of government sectors as well as government sectors as well as civil society you know, you know we got independence in 1947 and thereafter then we all sat down the the, the, the the people sat down to write the constitution and during the 50s and 60s we got a very beautiful constitution which we know today is being tampered with and i think uh, everyone want to actually then uh, look at that part of tampering and uh, very seriously involved in that and uh, very specifically looking at article 17 the abolition of untouchability we very clearly know that it's abolished and then uh, punishable by 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 law and so on and so forth 55 we also got the pcr act the protection of civil rights act and then uh, we know it was also punishable a lot of things happening it didn't work out and therefore we moved on to 1977 for another law and then later to the present one that we are having just looking at the protection of um, the prevention of atrocities on several caste and several tribes uh, 1989 and then we know i keep talking in a lot of my programs to say that how the government of the day is unwilling whether it's the government or whether this government which is at present ruling so they are unwilling to look at the protection of uh, a certain population which actually is the larger population in terms of the human beings that we talk about and uh, we had to wait till 1995 for the rules to come for the 1989 act to be in force now and uh, i am very very sad that always i want uh, advocates and activists and uh, socialists and others to talk about i think uh, where as day progresses as time progresses 
we need to know that the atrocities in a, in a very decent world should come down. But here, you know, a very newer form of violence, new forms of violence takes place. And then if you look at the 1989 Act, it listed on 22 offenses of atrocities, specific 22 offenses of atrocities, which do not happen on the other section of population. Therefore, when you come to the 2015, or the 2016 amendment, you will see it is very sad that you now have added on a way it is good for us to actually attack and then look at penalizing them. But then uh, now it is 100 plus atrocities. So it has become very, very serious that the population who are not Dalits are today emboldened by a state which is not working, a system which is not working, therefore emboldened to now look at newer forms of atrocities on these uh, population. And uh, now you have 2020, and then we look at uh, whether it's man-made, whether it is not man-made, and we have COVID and Corona that we call upon today, which is perpetuating violence, adding on, giving more room and teeth and lattes and power to the non dalits and I think the dominant caste and so-called the upper caste, especially the state through its arms, the judiciary, the executive, the legislature, to actually give... Uh, a lot of problem and then issues that uh, the already are facing. The larger issue that I want to talk about today is in terms of looking at the whole question of protection that we talk about today, which I think is very, very serious in terms of the larger population that look at. I think that Ajita mentioned a few of them. I want to look at more in terms of sex workers, street dwellers, the payment dwellers, the ones who sell the street wear on the street, the power of karmika, the sanitary workers, the domestic workers, I think she mentioned, the coolies, the loading and unloading, the ones who unload pipes in the market and so on and so forth. And, and all other people that we work from the masons to the plumbers, to the painters, to the helpers, to the workers, and especially also to the garment workers. I think a large number of population today are actually back at home for the past and from the march until till today are at home. Sitting, one, like Dr. Ajita mentioned, actually confined to the homes, and then second, I think, without their, I you know, we talk about depression, we talk about actually livelihood. What happened to these large sections of population where nobody even cares about these people, nobody even comes. The Prime Minister talks about it here, the Chief Minister of my state talks about it here, but what happens, nothing percolates down. I also then have initiated another group called the Indian Labor Union, which actually has 80 members. For the last three months, they said 5,000 rupees. Only yesterday, two of them called me and said, they said, we've got. So what happened in the last three months that you keep it? I also want to talk about another section that we talk about. All the aged, the widows, the spinsters, the disabled, people who all get the state pension. From the last one week, I'm trying to talk to people, which is, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to talk to them because nobody actually picks up the phone. I've sent people to these the government offices. The office are closing, Corona Bandi there. Corona is there, the people can't come. But what happened to this widow who's 15 years, 18 years, 30 years, 40 years, old age people who are 60 and plus, who you say have a national pension, we have a state pension, we have given them in advance. Two months they got it. Now there are people who have not gotten for the past six months. So many of them are scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Leave alone tribes population, which I'm not here. I, 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 I can't talk much because there are a lot of people who are scattered in. Therefore, I also want to say, what happens to the role of the state? You, I, I, I do not want to go into a list of cases that I've listed, including Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu. And I think uh, Dr. Ajita mentioned in terms of the 72% increase in Friends in Tamil Nadu called me to say there is a 40 cases during, I think, similar things in Kerala. I think uh, Advocate Baso Prasad also very clearly mentioned that it is very hard for us to actually look at situations like this, that which is happening. And I think I also want to draw the fact uh, for us to understand in terms of if there is a social distancing that we're talking about, a physical distancing that we're talking about. I don't know how these so-called dominant castes or the upper caste uh, can get into a group, get the lattice together, get people together and then go on. I think the state can't even wish to look at that from the naked eye to say that this has happened and then how they are not booked them and looking at it. I have a list of cases. I just want to go to at least a few cases here and there for us to actually understand the seriousness because then the, Dr. Ajita mentioned some of them from the north. I would like to look at some of them from the south. Uh, you have here a boy from Thirunamalai, actually a district in Tamil Nadu, 
the young boy who was wearing a t-shirt of ambedkar was beaten up and humiliated by police and the very fact that he did that was he, they said he was talking to women of a dominant caste so what happens if he talks to a dominant caste police has been suspended after an scst case that was filed there this is one of them karnataka you have a case where during covid people are dying without livelihood the state is not providing them any resources and all of these things are happening you have people who actually went to get sweet milk the state had to give milk they said one liter milk to all the shelka shelka families and poor families and laborers which never happened by political political big wigs actually took it up and then they did a lot of things so here anil and a friend who actually parked a car in front of one reddy's house and then went to distribute milk were actually beaten up by his family black and blue and then he had to uh, anil and his friend had to get hospitalized and then um, they he was ready made an open comment said that he's a low caste don't take milk from him and those sort of things and i think uh, the many activists today talk about a increase in the list of atrocities including domestic violence by our own people and the others also we have this famous case that everybody knows to look at uh, the in ap Dr. Sudhakar Rao, who was beaten up black and blue on the street, undressed halfway, and then uh, he handcuffed and put him on the street, humiliated to him. Uh, that is the doctor. The only point that he raised was that saying that mask, which today is also being an issue, even in Karnataka, Bangalore, otherwise, that he raised the issue of no protection for the doctors, no services for the people, and no mask for the things. You know. So therefore, uh, the only thing that he, he had, uh, he was alleged was he was trying to then assault uh, the police and so on and so forth. Which today the High Court has taken up, and then the commissions have taken up. Uh, I can go on like this to look at a lot of case that we can talk about in terms of uh, one Satish Dalit, uh, eight years beaten up uh, and made to drink urine, which actually is another form which. It happened in 1955. But the atrocities act brought it into it, but we, 2020 we still have that uh, going on. He was actually in love with another girl, and then they beat him up, and then uh, said later that he has a case of uh, attempt to rape on the girl. Um, I, I, I have uh, one case I think because uh, um, I think Baswa mentioned that one. I think Dr. Ajit also mentioned. Which about uh, 16th April? This is a very recent case in terms of COVID uh, that was happening. One Paloma was nine months pregnant. She descends 250 steps from a hilltop slum that she and a few others live there on top. So they were. She comes down because she has four children to go and buy some groceries. But the the dominant caste people down who stay there don't allow her to actually then go. This is not only for her but for all other sects. They do it because they 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 are openly saying that because of you people only corona is increasing and I think uh, she is sent back. So therefore uh, we know from 25th March the these 57 families who are here actually find it very difficult to look at. And these are actually I think we especially want to bring some energy communities who work as waste pickers and drinkers who are already actually sending their land and live there. Um, Many other cases, very specifically in terms of uh, uh, looking at uh, the case. Uh, I do not want to go into many of these cases. Um, Anil, I said I mentioned that case, and then Tumkur, very specifically in terms of looking at uh, uh, a case where uh, the person went to worship in a temple, was beaten up uh, along with his family members. And uh, to draw the very fact that uh, this is a reserved constituency where he got beaten up, and in the temple, uh, which he last year went, and then this year also went, and he got beaten up. And uh, it was too notable to mention that it is being represented by the former deputy chief minister uh, of Karnataka, uh, Dr. Parameshwara. So this is, I think, uh, uh, an increase in number of cases. And these are some of the reported cases, like Dr. Ajita mentioned, uh, documented by committed organisations in the, the NDJM and then uh, local organisations here in Karnataka and all of these people who, with the even T Mark, uh, that organisation which daily gets out their uh, their reports of atrocities and so on and so forth. I think uh, with the mainstream media, Dr. Ajita said, and then I think the uh, advocate Prasad also mentioned that um, they do not, they, they don't have our own people. They don't have our people to actually represent, and they are told not to actually represent. This is another way that we want to look at it because uh, 
One, they do not have a heart. One, they do not want news because it is against a certain section of the society. The dominant caste, the, the, the rich, and then the, the employers, and the state, and then police, judiciary, and so on and so forth. Therefore, these the media is also playing havoc in the lives of these large sections of population that you and I work with and talk about today. And I think uh, it will be a recurrent task for us to actually look at and expect uh, justice from an overburdened system always, and already it is there. And I think uh, many of the listeners will know because many of them are active in the field and people who are also in courts and so forth and doing research. Therefore, my, 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 my submission would also be to look at uh, one, uh, like I think Dr. Ajita mentioned, and uh, I think I, I partially heard here and there also because somewhere I also then uh, heard and then I think I, for me it is also true that an old burden system and a system where police, the judge, and a system which is actually against a certain section of population, I think uh, it is very, it is not very hard for us to accept uh, the expected justice from them because it is not happening from time immemorial, from the time we got 1947 independence. 2020 and with the corona onslaught that we look at it. I am also looking at another section of uh, work that I always I, I worked with. One I look at uh, the section of the by I the self the legal court for uh, the human rights defenders alert, which works with the defenders. We work with the issues. We work with defenders. And uh, like Rajita mentioned that in terms of the onslaught is more on women and Dalit women and so on. But you will also see Dalit human rights defenders, specifically targeted human rights defenders who work on these sort of issues are also targeted very much. This is on one side that I take up cases that I work with and intervene in terms, apart from the fact findings that we look at, uh, the recent case that we looked at a few months ago, along with the ALF's advocate Savita and a host of uh, organizations was also on a double murder case which is actually, incidentally, the deputy chief minister of the state represents that district. He never had the audacity to visit that place where a double murder happened. And it happened on a follow-up because there was, there was a system that the dominant caste do not want that other community to actually live its life. They are well, and then a double murder happened. And then people still today, we have taken up that case. A group of organizations come together in Karnataka and taken up that case and represent even to the, the legislative committee. But every other day, those people get threat calls the state doesn't intervene. We have to go on giving. How long can you go on giving? And one fine day, even those two persons got murdered on the same day. Hassan, the same thing happened. One person is murdered, beaten up, and another person, they have a case and counter case. I'm, for this, I also want to look at, uh, I'm also part of another initiative nationally, which is actually then uh, run by People's Watch, another initiative that we look at in terms of the INE program that we looked at for a few years, the All India Network of Individuals and NGOs working with human rights institutions in the state and uh, in the national level. You have friends, you should all know that uh, there are 169 plus commissions. The national level commission is the state commission. From the national human rights commission, the scheduled caste commission, the scheduled tribes commission, the women's commission, the minorities commission, the Safai commission, commission, the backward commission, and so on and so forth. And it has counterparts at the state level. Kerala one step going ahead to have a forward caste commission and then a youth commission also. You have children's commission and so on. I also want to know what are these commissions doing? Many of them are headless, but they still get paid because they have a secretary in there, so forth, so forth. So you have a lot of these safeguards built for the protection of these people. And today it is Corona, and then we say, um, and another organization that I represent is also the People's Union for Civil Liberties and, you know, friends in ALF and then Bantam Law actually have intervened in court. And then today we have the court intervening. But what, how much does it percolate down to the largest number of people that we talk about? One is physical atrocities like uh, ALF has very clearly put it up in terms of the atrocities, caste atrocities during lockdown. It is physical atrocities, psychological atrocities, and you will see then the state itself, in looking at in terms of the economic atrocities that these people are. So it is killing people legally, morally, socially, and everywhere. And I think uh, it, is, it, it is now time for us, for all of us to come together, to look at issues that, to see how the law has failed. The constitution has also, in terms of built in, but how it is failed in terms of then the larger representation that we talk about, how all our representatives in parliament or in the local bodies or in the states have failed, have not taken up these issues that we talk about. I can go on this thing in terms of the large discourse that we talk about, the safeguards that are there in the constitution and in the law and so on and so forth. But you will see today, 
Sarva Karma Chari is dying in manholes. Today, you have bond labor still exists and you know organizations rescuing every day. 1976, we say the bond labor is abolished. Who are the bond laborers? I argue with organizations, I argue with lawyers. I go to train some of these magistrates in the, in the academy. I ask policemen, hey, Baba, how, who, Yaru, who's that person who's actually a bond labor? Here and there, one or two might be backward classes and then the the minorities, but majority of them belong to a certain section that's the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Don't you know that the you, you can actually then invoke the provisions of the ACST Act, but no. Many do not know, many know, but then the state also plays have been that some release certificate, some money, some rehabilitation. How long will you go on from 1976 to 2020? How long do you want to do it? The Sarva Act has come, it is banned, natural carrying is banned, but you have still been able to say, Swamiji is looking at it who employ people, they are actually uh, Western welfare associations who are actually employing people. There's a police station that we heard a few years ago that they employ people to clean up. Aren't we ashamed? Should we not bow our heads down? Today we are talking about the democratic country, we have this, we have that, and all of other things. So therefore, I think we need to come back to look at what is the role of the state, what is the role of these uh, statutory bodies that are there in this country, what is their role? Why is government not doing it? Apart from looking at our the whole Act, 89 Act, 95 rules, and then the 2015 Amendment Act, which also talks about the state intervention, which very, very clearly says, in terms of uh, the state resilience communities, which need to meet periodically, and then need to look at what is the situation. It is not about services, it is not about the amenities, it is about physical atrocities and the status of cases that are there on this Dalit population. What are the district residence committees doing? How are they meeting? I have friends who go to this committee and we're trying to work around it to say that, how do you energize these people? People go there, but talk about well, okay, this service is not there, that service is not there. They also are not there. So I think in a way, we need to look at all of these things and to look at the special codes and their functioning. It is good to, for us to say there are special codes and there, that is, but how many of them are there? I think, uh, I forget the name of this organization, Delhi, which few, I think few years ago, mentioned that uh, very clearly how the judiciary and the police, the executive also, have people infested, the communal mindset infested people who have a very strong bias against minorities and the rich. This is very true. I, in, in Bangalore, I think uh, I read it, it is the front page of the newspapers, which is evident in a survey which was done by them. And I think that is very true of all the situations that you think, which the case that mentioned, Dr. Ajita mentioned, and then a list of cases I also then mentioned here, apart from a whole lot of cases, which can't be mentioned because there's less of time and then one, we could not document everything, everything is not documented, it's not heard. Therefore, I think uh, the, like she said, and I want to also say, this is an ongoing process that we always try to get organizations, individuals, lawyers together to see how these atrocities can be put in and how the state can proactively intervene. Whether we like it or not, the state is there and then we need to work with them. Therefore, you will also see organizations today being targeted, individuals being targeted, and then the organization that I represent, People's Watch, is also an organization who is targeted for its work that's being done inside the country, outside the country. And today, the FCRA has been blocked for many, many years. And then crippling organizations who will take up issues of Dalits, issues of custodial violence, death, and then right to livelihood and so on and so forth. Therefore, uh, I, I, I want to then uh, appeal to friends who are listening, friends who will listen to it later, and like uh, Dr. Ajita has actually offered, I also would like to offer from INI and then the HRD or the small group that we represent, that we need to put our heads together, minds together, and then physically ourselves, and now we know we can't physically always meet, but then uh, to put things together in perspective, to look at each bit of our interventions to say, where is it worked? Just then uh, suspending somebody, putting uh, somebody off from this work to another work is not going to help, but then sending the right signal to actually the powers that be that they cannot indulge in atrocities, whether it's the state or non-state actors on the Dalits. The second aspect in terms of protection of uh, the victims and their compensation and their rights are very, very important. In terms of the rehabilitation is more important and then uh, the protection of witnesses in terms of cases. That is very, very important. We all are today seized of uh, many cases, but then especially this uh, uh, double uh, death case, custodial case that we're talking about, where uh, a women sub-inspector itself herself, herself is very frightened that she could not, uh, she, she thinks she will be 
beaten, threatened, and intimidated by the state, which is openly declared, which is the case for many of the cases not being reported. Whether it's 72 percent, as Dr. Ajita mentioned, or 42 percent, like my friends in Tamil Nadu mentioned, these are all reported cases. But then there are a large number of unreported cases where you and me cannot go because every day you cannot have a helpline and then people can't call you tell I have not trust because there's a lot of bearing on them. So therefore, you should actually somewhere double these numbers, look at unrecorded cases, unreported cases, which actually will show there's a large number of cases, whether it is COVID or not COVID. Today, COVID has increased cases because the state is not active, state is active in siphoning of money in the name of the, including the Dalits, because they are the large number of uh, laborers that we talk about. The last thing I want to mention in terms of looking at uh, the atrocities is to look at the state itself as the perpetrator in terms of the large number of people who are suddenly then asked to stop work and then to go home, who started walking. Many got killed on the tracks, many got killed in the train bogies without food, shelter and so on and so forth, without health care and so on. So you have uh, all of these, which I will say, the state has, in terms of COVID, killed people by taking away the livelihood, by taking away the right to health, the right to access to health services, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I, I offer myself also to this larger intervention if it comes, and then we always keep doing a lot of training programs and sensitization. And I think our own people need a lot of sensitization and then not to lose heart. And I think uh, she mentioned, I didn't want to mention that, you know, that to look at also the uh, SCP Act and the, the TSP Act uh, in terms of the larger money that is there, which again, in the name of Dalits, in the name of Shilka, Shilka tribes, the larger the population needs this money, makes merry in the names of these people. We need to then assert our rights, press for our rights and the demand for our rights. I, I, I think it is inevitable and then I think uh, it's good without to say that, that, that uh, these things are a pandemic in a society like this, a caste society, that we need, we need to then demand it. Because I always started asking, why should we ask? Because there's other population who don't ask for their rights. Why should I ask my rights? I'm also a human being like that. But down the lane, I said, yeah, the powers that be is different than we need to. So we need to be organized. We need to come together. We need to have help of socialists, economists, and then advocates, and then academicians, and so on, lawyers, judges, and so on, for us to regain, retain, our lives and I think uh, we need to organize ourselves, we need to educate ourselves, and I need to fight for our rights. Um, I think I've taken a little more love time. I thank uh, the listeners and my co-speaker, Dr. Ajita, and then uh, ALF, especially the moderator, Advocate Baswan, the others. I'm here around and then uh, you can see how this goes about. Thank you once again. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. No, thank you. Thank you. Just briefly translate, Martini. Uh, Manohar, sir, you can't talk about it. You can't talk about it. You can't talk about Article 17 in the Asprashatena Raddumadi. Alinda Shuruagi Munde Nau 1955 Ali Prevention uh, Protection of Civil Liberties Act. Uh, Barute Iduno Atrocities Viruddha Amate Dalitorge Protection Koda Koskara Vandu Kaide Barute. Amele Idu Sakagalanta Heli Munde Namge Prevention of Atrocities Act Burte Idrali now Nodidre Ipa Terudu uh Dorjanya Guru Atrocity Agi recognize Agi Burate nineteen eighty nine Ali Age Munde Hokta two thousand sixteen Ali Amendment Bandi Sumaru Undu Nur uh Dorjanya Guru recognize Agi Iduno Atrocity and the uh cases uh cases hak bodu and the undu Hosa amendment burate. Ige Munde Hokta Idu Kanu or background Kote or Sumaru uh incidents Bage Matadru, uh e lockdown period early, lockdown kinta munche early, Undo Rain Hedondre, Oba uh Tirumala Yelli, Oba Yaro, Yoka, uh Ambed Kardu, T shirt Hakonda and the Heli, Amele Oba uh Mela Jatina on Mahilerna Mata did the Koskara on Ge Police or uh Tumba Dorjaneke Ola Patito and the other bage matadro, other jatagene or uh, APL Dr. Sudhakar Bage Matadu, Sudhakar Rao Bage Matadu, Yaru, Auru Bari Yeno issues it to main beds Bagerli, masks Bagerli, the Bage or issues raid Madi the Koskara or Milhege, Polisro, Dorjana, uh, Madadron Tadur Bage Matadro, Adur Jatagene, Hinondo uh, incident Bage Matarta, Oba Satish Anta, Uduga, Aur Mele, uh, Urin Madido Anta, uh, Urin Madido in a Kondre or uh, 
ಇನ್ನೂ ಮೇಲ್ ಜಾತಿ ಅಹ್ ಮಹಿಳೆಯಗೆ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಆ ತರ ದೌರ್ಜನ್ಯ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂತ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಈ ತರ ಸುಮಾರು ಇನ್ಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಹ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಹ್ ಇದ್ ಆದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಮೇನ್ ಮೀಡಿಯಾ ಏನು ಕವರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಅದು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಕ್ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅಹ್ ಅವ್ರು ಈ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ನ ಏನು ಕವರ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇದು ಅಹ್ ಮೇಲಿನ ವರ್ಗ ಇರ್ಲಿ ಮೇಲ್ ಜಾತಿ ಇರ್ಲಿ ಅವ್ರ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ವಿರುದ್ಧ ಇದೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಈ ಆ ರೀತಿ ಈ ಈ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ನ ಕವರ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬರೀ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತಾ ಹೇಳ್ದವ್ರಂಗೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರ ಮೇಲೆ ದಲಿತರ ಮಹಿಳೆ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಸ್ಟ್ ಏನಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೂ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಒಂದು ಅವರು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಅಹ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಡಿಫೆಂಡರ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಸ್ಟ್ ಏನಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಹೇಗೆ ಟಾರ್ಗೆಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ರು ಹಾಗೆ ಮುಂದೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಅವ್ರು ಬಾಗಲ್ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ರು ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಡಬಲ್ ಮರ್ಡರ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಲೋವರ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಮೇಲೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಅವರು ಎಫ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಫೈಲ್ ಮಾಡದೆ ಅಕ್ಯೂಸ್ ನ ಹೇಗೆ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಸಂಚ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅಂತ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಅವ್ರ ಮುಂದೆ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಫೈನಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಅವರು ಅಪೀಲ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದು ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಈ ಕಾಯ್ದೆ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಏನಿದೆ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ವಿಜಿಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಅಂತ ಇದೆ ಮಾನಿಟರಿಂಗ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಅಂತ ಇದೆ ಇವ್ರದ್ದು ಮೇನ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ನಾವು ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಅಟ್ರಾಸಿಟಿ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಆ ಏರಿಯಾನ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಇರೋದಿರ್ಲಿ ಆ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿನ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಕೊಡೋದಿರ್ಲಿ ಇದು ಕಾರ್ಯ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇದನ್ನ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಗ್ ಫೇಲ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಇದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಮತ್ತೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಅವರು ಎಫ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಫೈಲ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ ಹೇಗೆ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಅವರೇ ಜಾತಿ ಜೌರ್ಯನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅವ್ರ ವಿಚಾರ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಅವರು ಅವ್ರ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಈಗ ನೌ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಶೇರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತಾ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತಾ Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have sent you one question. The questions have been shared. Okay. Uh, I would, uh, the first one, the systemic brutality and apathy towards migrant laborers and poor, laborers and poor linked with the caste discrimination in society. Um, I, I think this is Abhishek Patel. i would just say that abhishek the, the majority of working class the laborers who have migrated from the villages small towns to big metros to find work to feed for themselves and who have migrated back the pers- if you go by the surveys and the studies that have been conducted right from the beginning of the migration of these workers and the laborers the majority of the population of the of the people that are there they are the dalits the adivasis and the marginalized communities belonging to the muslim and the dalit christians perhaps so uh, these and, and some of the poor from the very less from the upper caste so the major chunk of them belongs to these communities the marginalized community so if you are saying that how are they linked it is clearly linked that the had it been an upper caste guy who was sitting on the road on a highway and weeping that i need to go back home i want to uh, meet my parents that first visual which was aired soon after lockdown i'm sure many many from the cities would have taken the guy because had it not been for caste inequality had he been an upper brahmin upper caste brahmin poor upper caste brahmin he would have been taken in but why have the so much of the population been allowed to migrate back to back to the villages was because a we don't want them because of their caste um uh, belonging and two if they are present here we have to you know we they're not our responsibility at all so let them go let them die and root they're not my i have to let them off my shoulders so this is this is where the systemic structural abuse and um, violence that had been done on the laborers and the working class which we had all witnessed so many of them died died of hunger accidents um thousands 
of kilometers they had walked in the heat in 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 lack of transport facilities who in which government and in which state would allow such things to happen um jeff and abhishek if you're saying and let me say one well, this is one such incident which has happened recently for us to see but i would say that since kilwin many massacre of 1968 and to the present where we are down 50 years that is exactly 50 plus 52 years none of the atrocities and none of the had no uh, disc the violences that have been done on en masse dalits and tribal people have have ever been conviction being taken the conviction rate against all of that is stands merely at 4% less than 4% so um, and these are happening at a spiraling increase as was mentioned by manohar sir so i think we need to take into cognizance where and where are we heading in terms of homeless people being there in united states uk and elsewhere they had taken care of their own homeless people during this pandemic time but on the contrary our own people who don't didn't have shelter perhaps all these people they didn't have any shelter in this big metros that is why they were thinking we have to go back to our own homes what did the state do they just left them to fend for them to die and yeah we wanted certain um, community certain population to be erased off forever and that is that is what is called the systemic um um you know the, these people are just dying and and i am that is the state is very happy doing that so i think we need to condemn this which is happening right under our nose and i'm sure um, and and one more thing um, manohar sir i mean it was really nice listening to you yes. thank you so much and um, uh, i think we need uh, it we need to really go back in terms of uh, how to um, coordinate our struggles which are at present scattered across india because these struggles of ours be it the adivasi struggles the dalit struggles the the minority uh, the hatred which is happening en masse against the muslim community um i think we need to come together at a platform to sustain platform to fight such forces till then we are if we are in our isolated bits it would be uh, a very difficult place but my whole thing is that if we can get together um in 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 the shapes that we can perhaps it's a difficult thing but we should concentrate towards getting in the struggle against the systemic forces that are doing it for for the sake of humanity at least because till then uh, the stigma the the stigmatization the humiliation that is being vetted on on the communities we have to fight it uh, else the future generations have to suffer with stigma and we would be responsible for it thank you manohar sir you have something to add um uh, i just want to add on to the whole migrants that we talk about and how it is very clearly evident that the state actually is involved in whole this question of migrants coming here and going back and uh, some of us in the pucl and then st jude's college and we try to put uh, things in perspective in terms of understanding the interstate migrant workers act you know large number of workers from north india and north karnataka also have come here and they are working here in terms of ghettos that they are working here without major facilities that they are here are in the human beings does the state not see how many of the people are traveling from one place to another place and where are they and by looking at your face you have all of your vitriol that you can see who these people are leave alone covid but even before that you had the my interstate migrant workers act the workers act competition all of these that you talking about the labor act and so on therefore do you not have your system up with their antennas to look at who are these people coming here what are they what is the situation then you have people living in ghettos people living in huts people living and then you know that there are 
the whole lot of issues that we say they are Bangladeshi, they are here, they are terrorists and so on, beaten up, they stretch, demolished. During this whole COVID, you have upteen number of cases that there are demolition of houses of people who are migrants, Assam migrants, they are here with migrants. The PUCL has taken up its case and then I think friends from the Mantan law are actually always have intervened there, including elephant and others. Therefore, you will see migrant workers not registered. You would have had a list of registration done by the Labor Department, Social Department, and departments who are responsible, including the police, that you would have had a list of people that were here. But yeah, the metro, we had organized people who had put them in compound. And we had friends in Bangalore who had to go and rescue them and then put them back in, in the palace grounds and then actually send them back. And then I would always say the state has employed people. Its agencies, whether it's private agencies or state agencies, have employed a large number of people to work here as migrant workers. And all these people today have just gone back on their own without any payment, without any proper compensation that they will get. In. And today, it is very sad there are some groups and some individuals and companies who want these people to come back again because they're saying you don't have livelihoods there. That's an utter shame that you are forcing them because they're so back at home states are not working. And therefore, I would say it is the state's complicity in this whole issue that actually has intervened to make these people uh, cast as an issue and then perpetuating violence uh, on many of them. And uh, uh, we should also know that uh, many of them have not got that compensation. Many of them gone back, so they don't know. And coming back, I think, uh, it'll again, we are, that's another larger section that I want to talk about sometime later. In terms of the atrocity, they might get perpetuated on them by the locals also because many of them don't have employment and so on and so forth. Therefore, I think uh, there is one intervention I want to make at this point of time saying uh, the Labor Department has failed, the state has failed in terms of protecting uh, the rights of the migrant workers. And I think it has made the uh, Interstate Migrant Workers Act a useless, toothless act. Sir, there is one question referred to you. It's on your chat also. It says, uh, sir, what is your opinion of the Dalit organizations which are lately becoming commission agents of upper caste in compromising Dalit atrocity cases? Uh, uh, that was I, I, I expected this question. And I think uh, day in and out these questions are there. I think there are lawyers who are doing it. There are judges who are doing it. The police who are doing it. The state who are doing it. So I'm not uh, justifying uh, Dalit organization, but I think uh, they are also using ways and means. They're doing it. It's a shame that if Dalit organizations are doing it, and I think uh, I strongly condemn it. But uh, it, 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 it is another way that they are also trying to see this happening because. Uh, uh, they are looking for justice, but things don't happen. So it is out of compromise and things like that. But then, uh, therefore, I think uh, if, if something is being done, a compromise, it should be in the rights perspective. And then it should be from the point of the, the victim or the survivor's point, And then with their knowledge. And I think uh, in this country, we know many of them can't uh, surpass the state system. And they are bound to be Dalit organizations or other organizations who will do it. And I think. Uh, if we, there are, and I think we should counsel them and say that uh, it is affecting the larger rights of Dalits and then uh, it is spoiling the whole system. And I think uh, we, we, we have been always in terms of counseling and then try to intervene and to look at. But I think uh, I think as I mentioned, how the system works and then we should also know it is very hard for us to look at system. And Karnataka has the larger intervention in terms of uh, the Kambalapalli case, which today, till the Supreme Court, I think, uh, um, Dr. Uh, BT, uh, Advocate BT Ventish also is speaking about that and things like that. So a lot of these cases get compromised. And I think people also look at this one. This happens in human rights, many human rights cases also. So I think um, it is sad, but I think it should not happen. I strongly condemn those sort of things. Uh, so uh, Pallavi has talked about uh, COVID, um, effect of COVID on education. I mean, it is it is brazen and open out there that now in the times that we are in, wherein the e-education is there, online classes are being conducted. And it is only preview and privileged children and uh, uh, people who are getting access to the Android phones or the laptops who can get on to the classes where the teachers are teaching. What about the children who don't even have the smartphones, the children of the working class, children of auto drivers, cab drivers, anyone domestic helps. 
they don't even have the smartphones forget about laptops how would they sit on their online classes and be part of the classes that have started from april and now the new session is started from 1st of july so then the section of the children who are getting education is the upper caste and upper class and what about the children belonging to this particular marginalized community i think this lopsided need needs to be taken up and the hrd ministry at central and the state level should immediately either suspend classes altogether and say when there is physical when the children can all go to their classes attend classes in in person that is when the classes should be open for all till then suspension of classes has to be done and they cannot have classes only for certain section of students i condemn this outrightly and hrd minister and the state education ministers need to take a call on this and abhishek aapne jo ye likha hai ki uh, affirmation of uh, ye jo reservation wala scrap karna chahiye um, those agar aapko ye pata hai ki shuru se jab se reservation policy shuru hui hai aur ab tak agar aapko aankde pata hai statistically agar hum jayenge mehes 4 to 6% of total seats have been filled in the reservation category by the dalits you uh, and the reason for this is there are the school dropouts at 10th class there are the dropouts of the dalit and tribal children and the bahujan children dropouts at every level that is at mid level 10th class level 12th class level and when they come to higher higher education that is a, a very few percentage come so the total percentage of people who avail reservations and get into professional or normal courses is near 4 to 6 percent so who are you saying to say, who are you to tell that scrapping of reservation should be done i'm sorry friend democratic we have been caught in this thing of being given the right uh, the the legalistic approach we have seen as manohar sir has very rightly put it in the laws that have come the pcr then the poa act what has happened in with these legal measures that have been happening the 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 civil society and the society outside is saying that we are the ones who are saying yes commit crimes against us we want the compensation and then and at some point the murderers the rapists are all getting bail and they are out of it so what are we getting at the end of it our women's bodies our girl child bodies are being the the the, the sexuality the violence being inflicted on our women and children the men is it, it's they're just meant to be and just because the state is not doing anything and just pretends of they say they give compensation but what compensation has been put and what compensation suffices against the trauma that has happened both physically mentally to a young child i mean i can give you the example of uh, n number of um, rapes that happened in the year of nirbhaya rape um, 2000 um when nirbhaya's rape happened in the same year uh to september to october in the month in in uh, haryana there were many many rapes of dalit girls uh, women they were brutally gang raped murdered but none of that came into the mainstream media and everyone the entire nation was hobnobbing about nirbhaya yes even our heart went out for it but what about the children the women none of those cases were even uh, the fias were the police refused to fight because there was a good 
जाट लॉबी कि अगर तुम आकर एफ आई आर लॉन्च करते हो तुम्हारी खैर नहीं तुम्हारे पूरे पूरा का पूरा खानदान हम दबा कर कर रख देंगे दिस इज वॉट देर एज यंग एज ट्वेल्व थर्टीन टेन ईयर ओल्ड गर्ल्स बीन रेप एंड मर्डर वेर इज वेर आर दो न्यूज दिस इज जस्ट वन tiny uh, cities and tiny towns adjacent to the main capital city delhi what what to talk of of the ma- other places in india so uh, we do want to have we do want to go fight it in the legal way the democratic way um but well um, if if the people are left with no choices i don't know what what the future generations will do but we definitely would want to fight it in the democratic process because this is our place also and we come under we are here i mean if you say that um if the, if the people who have migrated back if they just say ki hum up wale hain hum bihar wale hain hum uh, हम दलित हैं हम मुसाहिर हैं हम आदिवासी हैं मुसलमान हैं तो इसका मतलब हम भारतीय नहीं हैं मतलब हम इंडियन नहीं है यानी कि आप हमारे तबके को तो निकाल दो आप सब लोग को सो जस्ट टू से दैट सो वी आर वी आर इन फॉर इट वी आर इन फॉर द डेमोक्रेटिक वी वी गो आर डेमोक्रेटिक वे fight it democratically and these are our rights and nobody can take away our rights as citizens of this country there is one additional question uh, it says do you think there has been constant weakening of judiciary happening how does it impact the idea of democratic struggle anyone can answer manohar sir or uh, uh, dr ajit manohar sir aap le le yeah um i i want to dr ajit to answer but i likely add my part friends uh, we all need to understand that uh, is not as it was in mean and i there so therefore see women less represented the schedule caste not represented all of these things and what is happening today is we we have seen from time immemorial and the recent past also how people who are in the judiciary are co-opted after they retire and that has happened i think uh, we know what happened to the recent cj who actually then retired and then who's got a plum post and today is an mp you have list of things like this is happening where people who are in certain positions whether it's the ifs ips ias and all these things they are there catering to the fancies and whims of the political parties and the government of the day because after they come back and then they do a lot of other things that they get in person therefore you see which has to put its foot down as many times does not it from a different point of view i mentioned which is the delhi uh, an ngo in delhi actually said that how people have become in the institutions have been infested by a lot of these uh, these forces also and i think a democratic country means a free independent judiciary but today you know everybody talks about how the judiciary has failed you know, except in terms of here and there because of civil society initiatives that the, uh, the 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 question of migrant workers or the the people traveling here and there and the dying on the tracks have been taken but the state had to actually be on its foot by the by, by the judiciary sphere but then today i don't think uh, the state has a fear of the judiciary and then they go on taking time where they had the commission where the otherwise you know and i think uh, that that is constantly happening and it is also then person said it sometime and then it is have uh, we have seen the, the first time in the history that uh, there were several judges who came out and then uh, sat and told something about uh, what is happening but we don't know after that what happened so therefore i think uh, it, it 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 is a, a system where uh, the common man finds it hard to go to them and then trust them some of us still believe in system like dr ajita said i think we should go the uh, democratic way and then judiciary at times actually is a savior and i think uh, they need to also pull up the socks and looking at a uh, lot of things but they will now tell us that uh, they have their own problem in terms of backlog uh, that no judges being appointed no infrastructure and so on and so forth and i think within their limits they need to do all that because uh, we know that they also cater to a certain sector population right and then out of the box and inside the box they do but why does it not do when it comes to larger question uh, 
of struggle of people i think is a question that we need to ask yeah um thank you sir um i think definitely there has been weakening of the judiciary that is happening and they, they that we have been seeing in case after case case after case coming to uh, the dalit atrocities right from 2006 kelanji incident where very entire operative officers right from the police to the judiciary they were all dalits but but the state forced them to give a judgment in the favor uh, against against the kelanji victims and they had to close the case with with nothing happening and finally the only survivor of of the kelanji entire episode died without seeing justice being given to him and so did the shopian incident happen wherein the both the women who were raped and uh, murdered the state went into investigation they said they were drowned in what one fee i mean the so less of water and then they said the cbi closed it saying that um, they were not they they were not raped they were not murdered by the state people so these incidences of where, where the judiciary where the law enforcement has to contravene and happen it's not happen they are in tandem in taking bringing weakening the cases so i think largely the ju judiciary the law enforcement they are in hand in glove and that is really really impacting the democratic struggle we are all together but um, i think the judiciary has to rise above all of it and give us a fair hearing just translate uh, all the responses briefly so from beginning uh, the uh, munche questions prashne gal en kelidru andre ee migrant workers ke matte jati dorjanake ya reetiya ada connection ide anta kelidru adakke manohar avaru matte dr ajita en helidru andre hege valse karmikara aarthika paristhiti yen kaatare ide anta na yochane madbeku sumaru valke valse karmikaru already ki lower caste inda bartare amele avaru aarthika paristhiti inda avaru ee tara ಬೇರೆ ಸಿಟಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಬಂದು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಇವಾಗ ಅವರು ವಾಪಸ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಊರು ಕಳಿಸುವಾಗ ಅಹ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏನಿದೆ ಅವ್ರ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಭಾರ ಇರಬಾರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ವಾಪಸ್ ಕಳಿಸಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದ ಅದೇ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲೂ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಸೇಫ್ಟಿ ಆ ಮೆಷರ್ಸ್ ತಗೊಳಾರ್ದೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಸುಮಾರು ನಾವು ನೋಡಿದ್ವಿ ಟ್ರೈನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ನು ತುಂಬಾ ಸಾವಾಗಿತ್ತು ಈ ವಲಸೆ ಕಾರ್ಮಿಕರ್ದು ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರು ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಮುಂದೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಏನ್ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ರಿಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ತೆಗಿಬೇಕಾ ಇರ್ಬೇಕಾ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರು ಅವಾಗ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತ್ ಅವರು ಏನ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇವಾಗ ರಿಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ನಾವು ಡೇಟಾ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೇನು ಎಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಎಷ್ಟ ಮಟ್ಟಲ್ಲಿ ಅದು ಅಹ್ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಯಾರ ಅದನ್ನ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ತಗೊಂತ ಇದಾರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ನಾವು ನೋಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಯಾವ್ದೇ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ರಿಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಅವರು ಅಹ್ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕೊನೆದಾಗಿ ಮೇನ್ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಏನ್ ಬಂತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಅಹ್ ಈ ದಲಿತ ಹೋರಾಟ ಏನಿದೆ ಇದು ಅಹ್ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಸ್ಟ್ರಗಲ್ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಇದು ಅಹ್ ಡೆಮಾಕ್ರೆಟಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಾ ಇನ್ ಮಿಲಿಟೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಕಾ ಅಂದಿದ್ದಕ್ಕೆ ಇಬ್ರು ಏನ್ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಹ್ ಯಾವಾಗ ಅಹ್ ಇವಾಗ ನಾವು ಅಹ್ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಜಡ್ಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಗಳು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಅಹ್ ಜಡ್ಜಸ್ ಅಹ್ ಏನು ಜಡ್ಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದು ಬರೀ ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಫೇವರ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಹ್ ಯಾವ ಅಕ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ಗೂ ಕನ್ವಿಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಾರ್ದೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅವಾಗ ನಾವು ಮುಂದಿನ ಪೀಡಿ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿಯಾದ ಕ್ರಮ ತಗೊಳುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಆದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಡೆಮಾಕ್ರೆಟಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಹೋರಾಟನ ನಡೆಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಉತ್ತರ ಕೊಟ್ರು ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಜಿತ ಅಂಡ್ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಸರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆಬಿನಾರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ and uh, we hope to continue uh, having these webinars and plan as to how we can work towards uh, the issue that we have uh, spoken discussed about today thank you everyone thank you thank you basu prasad and thank you manohar sir i think we should meet again and engage in uh, working together with both alf and manohar sir shiva thank you so much it was a pleasure meeting you all thank you thank you
thank you thank you dr ajita thank you advocate uh, baswa and then uh, alf and uh, sivamardan also and thank you participants also yeah thank you thank you sir.